Hello everyone, this is Eunice Leong of Wan Leong here. So in this particular video, we're going to be talking about two objects interacting. So in the previous uh, video, we actually talked about impulse and impulsive force and also momentum. So in this particular video, we're going to be talking about uh, two objects. When we observe two different objects interaction before and after the interaction, we will have to discuss regarding conservation of momentum. Now, before I proceed with on with the slides, there's one thing that everyone has to be aware is that whenever we deal with impulse, impulsive force, momentum, uh, conservation of momentum, Whenever we are dealing with all this, the physical quantity just right before and after the interaction, the that is the initial momentum, final momentum, or the impulse that we are talking about. All right, so the calculation for the velocity is actually right before and after the interaction, immediately before them. All right, so before that, let's talk about collision. What is actually collision means? The meaning of collision is the act of colliding or crashing okay in terms of physics collision means the meeting of particles or objects in which each exert a force upon the other causing the exchange of energy and momentum so when two objects collide with each other both exert a force onto each other in a short period of time so let's just say object A is moving towards the right with initial velocity UA and object B is moving towards the left with initial velocity UB. So during the interaction or collide, uh, collision, A exert a force onto the B labeled FA to B and B will exert a same force, all right, a same equal magnitude of opposite direction force from B towards A. And after that, a will move with its own velocity of VA and B will also move its own velocity VB. Okay, so but please, please remember what I mentioned earlier. The velocity and momentum represents the quantity immediately before and after the collision. Not long before or long after the collision, but immediately before and after the collision. So during the collision, okay, let me oh, take out my laser pointer. During the collision, the interaction obeys Newton's third law of motion, whereby the force exerted by A onto B is equal to negative force of B exerted onto A. And while this happened in a short period of time, which means the time of contact for A and B is the same, so I label that as T. When I multiply T into this first equation, F A to B, Multiply by the time of contact equals to negative force B onto A multiplies the time of contact. This is actually change of momentum. So that's why delta momentum, change of momentum of A is equals to the negative change of momentum of B. And I, if I were to expand out that particular term, it is the mass of A multiplied by change of velocity A equals to the negative mass of B multiplied by change of momentum velocity of B. So if I expand it out some more, I will get MAVA minus MAUA, the initial uh, final momentum minus initial momentum of A equals to the negative MBVB minus MBUB or the final momentum of object B minus initial ob uh, momentum of object B. So if I multiply this in and rearranging, letting it the initial momentum to be on the left and final momentum on the right, I will get MAUA plus MBVB equals to MAVA plus MBVB. What does this term actually mean? This actually means that the total momentum of object A and B before the collision is equal to the total momentum of object A and B after the collision. And this is what we know as total momentum is conserved. But what does conservation actually mean? It's a new term to students. So conservation, I will use this particular uh, comic strip to actually explain this out. Okay, now Ray here has 100 ringgit and has a few brand new USB pen drive. Then L has 50 ringgit and she has few handmade jewelry that she made on her own. So Ray asked L how much money does both of them have in total? 
So Ray has 100 while L has 50 and that makes 150 in total between the two of them. So L, uh, uh, Ray asks L, is there any suitable gift that can he can give for his mother's birthday? Since L is actually a jewelry maker, she actually has a matching necklace and earrings and she can sell them to Ray as 30 ringgit. Okay. So Ray gave L 30 ringgit and L gave the items to Ray. So right now, how much does the money between them have in total? All right. So in this particular case, Ray has 70 ringgit while L has 80 ringgit and the total after the transaction is 150. So the total amount of money before and after they have the sales transaction is the same. So this is actually what we call as conservation. The total money before the transaction is 150 and after buying some stuff from L, the total amount that both of them have is also 150. So the money, uh, the total amount of money that two of them have is actually conserved. So that is actually what we meant by conservation. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. So that actually comes into conservation of momentum. Okay. So in conservation of momentum, the definition states that the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision if no external force acting on it. So total momentum before collision is equal to total momentum after the collision. So there's two types of collision and there's one explosion in the topic uh, in the syllabus of KSS and physics. So the two collision is elastic collision and inelastic collision. So let's try to see this particular using this simulation to observe elastic collision. Okay, so let me open up my Excel. Okay, so over here, I also uh, created this particular Excel format. All right, whereby it can actually help us to calculate first. All right, we want to see how does elastic collision and inelastic happens. So from this particular simulation, I'm going to use explore one dimension because conservation of momentum in KSSM syllabus is only limited to one dimension. So I'm going to check on the velocity and I'm going to untick the reflection value. I'm going to click on the more data, okay, whereby I can manipulate more stuff. So in this particular case, I'm going to just move this. All right. So I'm going to record this value down the mass onto my Excel file. So my mass here is 0 0.5. The object of mass 2 is 1.5. Initial velocity is here. All right. How do I know it's initial velocity or before collision? The arrow is pointing towards each other. So that's how I consider it as before collision. So the initial velocity here is 1. And as you can see, the initial velocity of object 2 is negative because it's going towards the left. So that's negative 0 0.5. And the initial momentum here is already written down here. That would be 0 0.5 for object 1. And then negative 0 0.75 for object 2. Okay, so my Excel format actually calculates everything out uh, because I want the students to see the concept first. So I'm going to click play and let the two objects collide and pause immediately. Now pausing immediately, the velocity have changed, so have the momentum. So over here, final velocity is negative 1.25. For object 2, that's 0 0.25. Final momentum, negative 0 0.63 for object 1. And objects to momentum 0 0.38. So you see from the calculation, before and after the collision, the momentum is negative 0 0.3. Okay, the momentum is both negative 0 0.3. So total momentum before collision is equal to total momentum after collision. So we consider that as total momentum is conserved. The second analysis part is total kinetic energy before collision is positive 0 0.4 joules. After collision, the total kinetic is also 0 0.4 joules. Since the value is equal to each other, it is also conserved. And since total momentum is conserved, total kinetic is conserved. Therefore, it is considered as an elastic collision. All right. And going back to the simulation, you can see that the elasticity is at the elastic part. This actually means that the collision is uh, an elastic collision. 
Okay, so let's go to the next one. All right, let's go to the next simulation. In the next simulation, uh, in this next, uh, sorry. Okay, so over here, we would actually notice in the elastic collision, total momentum is conserved, total kinetic is also conserved, then uh, total kinetic, uh, total energy is also conserved. So this actually is the characteristic of elastic collision. Total momentum conserved, total kinetic energy conserved, and total energy is conserved. A true elastic collision normally happens in the atomic and subatomic particles. In normal situation, it can only be approximate elastic collision because we still can hear sound from the collision. And that sound is actually where energy is lost. All right, but for KSSN syllabus, we actually assume it as an elastic collision whereby the objects are actually separated after the collision. Okay, so let's go to the next type of collision. Okay, so for the next type of collision now, all right, I'm taking the reflection reflecting border, click, click on the more data. I'm going to change the elasticity to zero percentage that's in elastic collision. Again, um, I'm going to, if you notice from the Excel, the initial value for momentum is going to be the same. The only difference now is an elastic, in elastic. So I'm going to click play on the simulation and pause. You would notice that both objects actually sticks together. This is zero percentage in elastic. All right. So after velocity is negative 0 0.13 and the final velocity of object 2 is also negative 0 0.13. The final momentum is negative 0 0.06. And for object 2, it's negative 0 0.19. So I click enter. All right, from my Excel, you can see that total momentum before and after collision is equal. So the total momentum is conserved. But Total kinetic energy before collision is 0.4 joules. Total kinetic energy after the collision for is 0 joules. All right. And then since the total kinetic energy before and after the collision is not equal, total kinetic energy for this particular collision is considered as not conserved. All right. And since total momentum is conserved, but total kinetic energy is not conserved, this is considered as an inelastic collision. All right. So how do we identify inelastic collision? It's whereby the total kinetic energy is not conserved. Okay. So in elastic collision, the conditions is total momentum has to be conserved, total kinetic energy not conserved, but total energy still conserved. So, but you have to aware in physics world, there is actually two types of inelastic collision, perfect inelastic and normal inelastic. Perfect inelastic means when by the colliding object sticks together and moves together after the collision, just like what happens when a meteoroid hits the earth. All right, inelastic collision is when by the colliding objects do not stick together, but some of the kinetic energy is lost due to deformation or sound energy. All right, this is the two types of inelastic collision in physics. But for KSSN syllabus, we consider it as perfect inelastic collision for the SBM level. All right, as I re remarked, most of the collision on Earth, the kinetic energy is not conserved because whenever two objects collide, the energy is converted into some other uh, form of energy in terms of uh, sound energy. Some energy is being lost, so it can't conserve fully. So as I mentioned, in the context of SPN physics, only two cases, two extreme cases were considered which means either elastic collision or perfect inelastic collision. Elastic collision is by, by after colliding, the objects are moving separated. Perfect inelastic collision is after collision, the object is moving together. All right, that's perfect inelastic collision that is being discussed and considered as inelastic collision in the SPM physics. Now, this is a mind map regarding elastic and inelastic collision. Now, for for elastic and inelastic collision, 
all right sorry this is not momentum only but the total momentum so i'm just going to write a total here total momentum is conserved for both elastic and inelastic collision and the total energy is conserved total energy means the sound energy the heat energy the kinetic energy everything has to be conserved but the difference is for elastic collision both object moves independently means separated at their respective velocities after collision and the kinetic energy again total kinetic energy right the total kinetic energy is conserved for elastic collision for inelastic collision both objects combine and move together with a common velocity after the collision remember for spm level inelastic collision means the perfect inelastic collision all right whereby it moves together after the collision and the total kinetic energy is not conserved which means the value will be different okay the other types of uh, that we will be discussing is explosion explosion is whereby a situation where an object at rest breaks up into two or more parts that is actually uh, explosion situation so that actually ends this particular video all right the next video i will actually be talking regarding uh how do you actually calculate co uh, conservation of momentum and also uh explosion the uh questions so until the next video i hope you have already clarified regarding conservation of momentum the elastic and inelastic collision okay so till the next video of the sol problem solving quest uh video so i shall see everyone till then if once again, if you actually like my video, remember to click like and subscribe. hit the subscribe button for my video. Bye everyone!